alcohol, often referred to as a means to relieve sadness, has unfortunately played a destructive role in the lives of many Hollywood stars, and Paul Lind was no exception. Best remembered for his iconic portrayal of the witty and flamboyant gay Uncle Arthur on the television show. Bewitched, Paul Lind's career reached its zenith before it was tragically derailed by his battle with alcoholism. In what felt like the blink of an eye, everything that had constituted his success, his career, financial stability, and cherished bonds, was reduced to ashes. If you don't know about Paul Lind's tragic story, don't miss this video. Paul Lind started drinking in 1965 when he and a fellow actor named Bing Davidson went out on the town. Since then, alcohol has become a habit that is difficult for him to break. However, the peak of this addiction stemmed from a failure in his career. The cancellation of the Paul Lind show marked a turning point in Paul Lind's life, one that would have a profound and dark impact on his well-being. Up until that point, it appeared as though his career and life were on an upward trajectory. However, the abrupt end of his television show took a toll on him that he struggled to bear. Paul Lind had always been a perfectionist, and he had a deep-seated fear of failure. This fear had been a part of his personality for years, Lurking in the background, he constantly felt the pressure to succeed and be the best at what he did, which was why the cancellation hit him like a sledgehammer. It was as if all of his efforts had gone to waste, and he couldn't come to terms with this perceived failure. To cope with the overwhelming feelings of disappointment and rejection, Paul Lind turned to alcohol as a means of escape. He had already battled with drinking issues before the cancellation, but now, these problems escalated to a dangerous level. Alcohol became his crutch, a way to numb the pain and self-doubt that were eating away at him. As the heavy drinking continued, it began to take a toll not only on his physical health but also on his personality. Friends and family who had once known him as a vibrant, witty, and jovial individual started to witness a sinister transformation. Paul Lynn's once charming and affable demeanor gave way to a darker, more unpredictable side. He became increasingly irritable and prone to mood swings. His sharp wit, which had been his trademark, turned into biting sarcasm and cruel remarks. The alcohol-fueled alter ego that emerged from his insecurities was a far cry from the beloved comedic persona that audiences had adored. The cancellation of the Paul Lind show had not only shattered his career aspirations, but also his sense of self-worth. This combination of professional setbacks and personal turmoil had pushed him into a downward spiral, making him a shadow of his former self. The cycle of self-destruction, fueled by alcohol and the inability to come to terms with his perceived failure, cast a long and dark shadow over his life. The magazine photo spread depicting Paul Lind as a perfect gentleman was a stark contrast to the disturbing reality that many who knew him faced when he was under the influence of alcohol. Behind the polished facade, Lind struggled with a dark and destructive side that became increasingly evident when he drank excessively. Steve Wilson and Joe Florensky's book, Center Square, shed light on the troubling behavior that Lind exhibited while inebriated. They described his words as pure venom, highlighting just how drastically his personality transformed when he consumed alcohol. It was as though the charm and charisma that made him a beloved entertainer vanished, replaced by a caustic and hurtful demeanor. One particularly shocking incident serves as a testament to the extent of Linda's cruelty when he was under the influence. It is the story of him using a restaurant manager's hand as an ashtray, an act that not only reveals the depths of his inebriated recklessness, but also the disregard he had for the feelings and well-being of those around him. This incident exemplifies how alcohol had taken control of his behavior, leading him to commit actions that were not only inexcusable, but also deeply painful to others. Caddy remarks had long been a part of Paul Lynn's comedic persona, and his sharp wit and biting humor were often seen as part of his charm. 
However, as his drinking problem escalated, these remarks became increasingly vicious and hurtful. He crossed the line from playful banter to outright cruelty, causing emotional harm to those he interacted with. It is evident from these accounts that Linda's drinking problem had spiraled out of control, leading to a level of cruelty and recklessness that was difficult to reconcile with the image of the affable entertainer. His actions, fueled by alcohol, began to alienate those around him, straining his relationships and reputation in both personal and professional spheres. In 1977, Paul Lind was granted the honor of being the Grand Marshal at Northwestern University, his alma mater. The parade itself was a success and went off without any notable issues, and it should have been a moment of celebration and pride for Lind. However, what happened afterward would cast a shadow over the event and serve as yet another example of the troubling behavior he exhibited when under the influence. While dining at a Burger King after the parade, Paul Lind noticed a professor from Northwestern University who happened to be black. What exactly Lind said to the professor remains somewhat shrouded in uncertainty, but it is widely rumored that he made a racially insensitive comment. According to reports, he suggested that the professor should get a job behind the counter. This remark was not only highly inappropriate, but deeply offensive, playing on racial stereotypes and making light of a serious issue. Understandably, the professor and those who witnessed the incident were deeply offended and hurt by Linda's comment. It was a moment that highlighted his insensitivity and disregard for the feelings and dignity of others, particularly when he was under the influence of alcohol. This incident demonstrated the extent to which alcohol had impaired his judgment and unleashed a darker side of his personality. When confronted about his offensive statement, Paul Lind attempted to deflect blame by attributing the incident to exhaustion and overdrinking. While it's not uncommon for individuals to rationalize their behavior when confronted with the consequences of their actions, it was clear that his drinking problem was contributing to a pattern of thoughtless and hurtful behavior. One of the most poignant and heart-wrenching events in Linda's life occurred in 1977, when he lost his dearest companion, his beloved dog, Harry McAfee, named after his character in Bye Bye Birdie. Harry was not just an ordinary pet to Lind, he was a constant source of comfort and companionship in a sometimes turbulent life. The loss of Harry McAfee was a devastating blow to the actor, as he had developed an incredibly deep bond with his furry friend over the years. Harry provided unconditional love and companionship, offering Lynn solace during both his moments of triumph and his times of personal turmoil. This close relationship was a testament to the power of the human-animal bond, and Harry was, in many ways, Paul Lind's closest confidant. After Harry's passing, Lind found himself struggling to cope with the void left by his cherished canine companion. The grief he experienced was palpable, and it became evident that the actor had grown emotionally dependent on his four-legged friend. It's not uncommon for individuals to form deep connections with their pets, but in Lind's case, Harry had become an integral part of his daily life. In his mourning, Paul Lynn took an extraordinary, expensive, and ultimately very sad step. He attempted to alleviate his grief by having Harry McAfee's body preserved through taxidermy. This decision was not only a reflection of his profound attachment to his dog, but also a desperate attempt to keep his loyal companion with him, even in death. It was an unusual and costly gesture that illustrated the depths of his grief and the lengths to which he was willing to go to hold onto the memories of his faithful friend. The connection between Paul Lind and his home, Errol Flynn's mansion, was deeply rooted in his heart. He had developed a profound attachment to the grand and historic residence, cherishing it as a place of comfort and refuge. However, after the passing of Harry McAfee, the mansion that had once been a sanctuary became a painful reminder of his beloved pooch. Every corner of the mansion seemed to echo with memories of Harry, from the moments they had shared in the expansive garden to the cozy evenings spent by the fireplace. These memories, while cherished, 
also brought an overwhelming sense of grief and loss. Lind found himself unable to escape the constant reminders of his loyal companion, making the mansion a bittersweet and even haunting place. This deep sadness and the desire to distance himself from the painful memories ultimately led Paul Lind to make a difficult decision. He decided to pack up his belongings and leave Errol Flynn's mansion behind in search of a new place to live. It was a heartbreaking choice, as he had loved the mansion dearly, but he felt it was necessary for his own emotional well-being. Linda's decision to move was a reflection of the emotional toll that the loss of his dog and his ongoing struggles with alcohol had taken on him. It was a sign of his determination to find a fresh start and escape the overwhelming grief that had settled over him. However, it also highlighted the depth of his suffering during this period of his life. The combination of overdrinking and the loss of his beloved pet had taken a toll on Paul Lin's overall well-being. It was a challenging and dark time for the entertainer who had brought joy and laughter to so many. Despite his persona as the wise, cracking, and witty gay uncle, behind the scenes, he grappled with personal demons and heartache that made his life far more complex and difficult than it appeared from the outside. The alleged incident involving Paul Lind and a disastrous flight is a shocking and concerning episode in his life that highlights the severity of his struggles with alcohol. It sheds light on the extent to which his drinking had spiraled out of control and the profound consequences it had on his personal and public life. The ill-fated flight is said to have taken a turn for the worse due to Lindy's excessive drinking. By the time the plane landed, he was in such a state of inebriation that he required assistance from airline staff to disembark safely. This level of intoxication on a commercial flight is not only dangerous but also disruptive to other passengers and the airline crew. It reflects the depths to which his addiction had taken him and the potential risks he posed to himself and others. The shocking aspect of the incident did not end with Lind being helped off the airplane. As he exited the aircraft, it became apparent that he had somehow lost all of his clothing during the course of the flight. Consequently, he found himself in the airport terminal wearing nothing but a blanket, a bizarre and humiliating situation that drew the attention and likely the shock of fellow travelers and airport personnel. This incident serves as a stark illustration of the chaos and dysfunction that can result from unchecked alcohol abuse. It is a testament to the extent to which Paul Lynn's drinking problem had taken over his life, leading him to engage in behavior that was not only self-destructive but also deeply embarrassing. Furthermore, the mention that Lind seemed to stir up trouble no matter where he went underscores the broader pattern of erratic and disruptive behavior that characterized his life during this period. It's not uncommon for individuals struggling with addiction to find themselves in situations that lead to confrontations and difficulties in various aspects of their lives, including their personal relationships and public interactions. In 1978, Paul Lin's life took another unfortunate turn. This time while he was working alongside the squeaky clean and wholesome Donnie and Marie Osmond in Salt Lake City. Despite being surrounded by performers known for their pristine images, Lind found himself in a predicament that once again brought him into conflict with the law, further highlighting the destructive impact of his ongoing battle with alcohol. The incident unfolded after Lind had been drinking at a tavern in Salt Lake City. As he left the establishment, he was confronted with a distressing discovery. Someone had broken into his car. The shock and frustration of this intrusion must have been compounded by his already fragile emotional state, given his struggles with alcohol and the personal issues he had been grappling with. In a stroke of luck, there happened to be a police officer in the vicinity at the time of the break-in. Recognizing the need for immediate assistance, Lind approached the officer and asked for help. However, here is where the situation took a significant turn for the worse. The officer who was already engaged in dealing with another car burglary, had his hands full and was unable to immediately attend to Lynn's situation. 
It's important to note that police officers often have to prioritize their responses to emergencies based on the severity and immediacy of the situations they encounter. In this case, the officer likely believed that the ongoing burglary took precedence. Frustration and impatience may have played a role in Lindy's actions at this point. Completely intoxicated and distressed by the break-in, he made a regrettable and costly mistake. The specifics of his actions may not be entirely clear, but it is known that his interaction with the officer took a negative turn. This incident underscores the vulnerability and poor decision-making that often accompany severe intoxication. While Lin may have been genuinely distressed by the break-in and sought help, his state of inebriation likely impaired his judgment and led to a confrontation that escalated the situation. It serves as yet another example of how alcohol had a detrimental effect on his life, causing him to make choices that had lasting consequences. The incident involving Paul Lind and the police officer in Salt Lake City took a concerning turn as Linda's frustration and intoxication escalated. It is at this point that his interactions with the officer became increasingly belligerent and confrontational, reflecting the impaired judgment and aggressive behavior often associated with excessive alcohol consumption. Lind, seemingly determined to get the assistance he believed he deserved, refused to let the officer leave the scene until his demands were met. His determination to receive help, mixed with his anger and desperation, led him to engage in behavior that was confrontational and non-compliant. As a result of Lindy's escalating aggression, the police officer found himself in a difficult position. In order to maintain control of the situation and ensure the safety of both Lind and those around him, the officer had no choice but to take decisive action. This action involved apprehending Linve and taking him into custody, as his behavior posed a potential threat. It's worth noting that the officer's decision to take Linda to the police station was a measured response, and he could have chosen to press charges against the actor. The potential charge of interfering with an officer was a real possibility, given the circumstances. Such a charge would have further compounded Lin's legal troubles and added another layer of complexity to his already tumultuous life. The irony of the situation is noteworthy, as the charge of interfering with an officer could indeed be likened to one of Paul Lin's witty setups on the popular game show Hollywood Squares, where he was known for delivering humorous and clever punchlines. However, in this real-life scenario, there was nothing humorous about the consequences he faced. The revelation of Paul Lin's incident outside the bar in Salt Lake City had far-reaching consequences, not only for his personal life, but also for his professional career, particularly his recurring guest appearance on the Donnie and Marie Osmond show. As the news of his behavior became known to the Osmond family, it brought to light a surprising aspect of his night out, that he had been drinking at a well-known gay establishment. This revelation created a significant and uncomfortable dilemma for Donnie and Marie Osmond, who were not only famous entertainers but also known for their strong ties to the Mormon faith, an ultra-religious and conservative denomination. The Osmonds were deeply committed to their religious beliefs and their public image reflected their wholesome and family-oriented values. The stark contrast between Paul Lynn's behavior and the Osmond's devout and conservative lifestyle became immediately apparent. The news of Linda's actions and the fact that he had frequented a gay establishment created a clash of values and an uncomfortable association that the Osmond family was not prepared to tolerate. In light of these revelations, it didn't take long for the Osmonds and the producers of their show to make a decision. Recognizing the incongruity between Lynn's behavior and their family-friendly image, they concluded that he and the ultra-religious Osmonds were not a good match. As a result, Lind was informed that his recurring guest appearance on the Donnie and Marie Osmond show was coming to an end. The termination of his role on the show had significant financial implications for Paul Lind. Not only did he lose a source of income, but he also faced the potential damage to his reputation in the entertainment industry.
This development further added to the challenges and setbacks he experienced during a period marked by personal struggles and legal issues. The tragic and untimely end of Paul Lin's life on January 11, 1982, sent shockwaves through the entertainment industry and left his friends and colleagues devastated. It was a somber culmination of the challenges and turmoil that had marked his personal and professional journey. The events leading up to his passing began with a birthday celebration that Lind was expected to attend on January 10, 1982. However, he failed to make an appearance at the gathering, causing concern among his friends, particularly actor-model Paul Barese. As the hours passed without any word from Lind, Barese and another friend, actor Dean Dittman, grew increasingly worried. In a desperate attempt to check on Lynn's well-being, Barese and Dittman tried calling him multiple times, but their calls went unanswered. They also went to Lindy's residence in Beverly Hills, California, and knocked on his door, hoping for a response. When their efforts to make contact proved futile, their concern deepened. Fearing the worst, Paul Barese made the difficult decision to take action. He broke into the side entrance of Linda's home, an act of desperation driven by genuine worry for his friend's safety. What he discovered in the early morning hours of January 11, 1982, was a heartbreaking scene. Paul Lind was found lifeless in his bed, having passed away during the night. He was just 55 years old at the time of his death. The news of his sudden and unexpected demise sent shockwaves through the entertainment community and left his friends and loved ones grappling with a profound sense of loss. One of the stories that circulated suggested that Linda had a visitor at the time of his death who had fled the scene. However, the available evidence contradicted this narrative. It was established that Linda had been alone at the time of his passing. This fact was substantiated by the activation of his house alarm system. When Paul Baresi broke into Linde's home due to concern for his well-being, the alarm blared, indicating that no unauthorized individuals had been present. This dispelled any notion of foul play or the presence of an uninvited guest. Contrary to some reports that claimed Lindy was found naked, Paul Baresi clarified that Lindy was, in fact, dressed in his pajamas and wearing a robe when he discovered his lifeless body. This detail helped to provide a more accurate picture of the circumstances surrounding Lynn's death. The official cause of Paul Lynn's passing, as determined by the coroner, was a heart attack. While his struggles with alcohol had been well documented, the ultimate cause of his death was attributed to this cardiac event. It served as a reminder of the potential health risks associated with long-term alcohol abuse. Following his cremation, Paul Lynn's remains were interred at Amity Cemetery in Amity, Knox County, Ohio. He was laid to rest next to his brother Johnny and his sister Helen. The cemetery also holds the graves of his parents and his veteran brother Corridon. This final resting place became a poignant tribute to the Lindy family's connection, and it served as a place for loved ones to remember and pay their respects to the entertainer who had brought joy and laughter to so many during his lifetime. What do you think about the alcoholism that destroyed Paul Lind? Leave us your comments in the section below. We hope you have found this helpful video. Don't forget to leave a like, share, and subscribe to the channel if you like it. Thank you for watching this and see you in the next videos. Goodbye.